Hello everyone, welcome to Mining Now, a product promo with one of my favorite companies. Said it many times, I'll say it a hundred more times till Luke stops taking my call. Uh, Safe Cage. Love, I love what you do. I uh, loved it from the first uh, time we had you on the show. And today we've got uh, Dan Hawkins, industrial designer at Safe Cage. Yeah, great to be on the show. You're actually my part of the design team of these products? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's amazing. Well, so, so I'm directly complimenting you, and I always talk about the design. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, complimenting the team. Well, and um, and some so something I've learned. I saw the tag somewhere. Oh, it was right here, back here. Yeah. There's this little uh, triangle. So oh. then, I learned, of course, if you want like actual Australian-made Uggs, you look for that little triangle. Yeah. So now that I've seen that many times, but it just was a thing I saw. Yeah. This this means it's means. designed in in Australia. Yeah. and made here right yeah yeah so we go through an application process and basically you log where all of your components come from where the final assembly happens which for us is in the same office that i work in that the engineering mm -hmm. team works in in beresfield in newcastle um so they're all assembled there calibrated tested and then shipped out from there to all over the world now yeah yeah which is really really uh, cool what sort of separates out that that high level testing from the, the the company that wants to use all the feature i'm guessing if you've got a large fleet company they yeah. need to collect all that da data if you're working at like a mechanic shop maybe they don't need they just need to test it know what's happening with the machine is that sort of yeah a yeah fair example on yeah so your smaller contractors or um yeah mechanic workshops they just want to basically have a way even just where they can do the test with one person as opposed to three or mm -hmm. two people um, where one person can put on a couple of sensors and be up in the cab operating the machine, getting those live readings. Yeah. So that's a good scenario. But then on the other end where you'd be using that reporting, data logging, and then basically sending that to your supervisor, that we find that uh, the large companies, for example, Hastings Deering, um, one of their use cases is uh, doing a test and actually having the proof there in a PDF report mm -hmm. showing that, hey, we're getting 1.3 millimeters movement in this bush that's only meant to have 0.8 millimeters. Right. And they've had scenarios where they've told the customer that in the past and they've said, oh, you know, don't really know if I believe you, like it's probably going to be fine, right. don't replace it. Right. It might have gone and failed in the field. But they can say, hey, we've got this this evidence, this PDF report to show this is exactly the reading we're getting. And the customers are a lot happier to go, oh, okay, well, I can see the see the proof there. I can see why you did it. It all makes sense. It's so funny how why doing these shows is so interesting because you, you think you know a product and I've never, in the conversations with Safe Cage, and we've, I've interviewed a few different people from your team, it's never been from that angle. Yeah. It is if the client, if you're telling the client something and they go, oh, it's fine. Obviously, yeah. if you're in-house, you're testing your gear going out all that makes sense but i never thought of someone just saying yeah it's fine it's like no it really like we actually have that information now yeah. this is not a theory this is not from us eyeballing it this is not from us wanting to give you an, yeah. an extra service this is actually a reading what about the customer feedback how does that sort of play where where does this sort sort of the first entry point for customer feedback come into would it land on your desk first where does it go so yeah, in the product specialist role, it would sort of come uh, straight to me. And now we've, yeah, we've got someone, uh, Hash from the engineering team. He is sort of taking all the new, new ideas and scoping out, visiting customers to get uh, those insights. But the customers almost, they, they've guided the roadmap of products. Mm. Um, so for example, the, the push rod there, there's a particular- That's this right here? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So you can see it's got two little magnetic mounts on either side. And then you basically, the measurement that they're getting is the movement between those two, those two points. Right, okay. So there's a particular test called the, the steering shake test that they do on a dump truck. And what that does is it actually tests for the wear in all the eight steering linkages. So, you know, when you turn right, all the linkages move and then twist the wheels around to turn the way you want to go. Um, all those need to be operating, you know, to spec. Otherwise, if they fail in the field, it can cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the truck back in, repair it, 
the amount of time that goes into that is yeah and never mind downtime and all that yeah exactly so the way that they could do it in the past was with a dial indicator um i guess the customer feedback on that is that hey this particular material that these linkages are made of is a cast steel which doesn't quite have the same magnetic properties as oh. something that's like machined like right. a, a cylinder and so these magnets don't have quite as stronger holding strength and when you've got this weight that's at a pendulum further out yeah. there's the risk of that actually falling off when they shake the machine vigorously mm -hmm. so which is what the, is required that's, for the test. that's yeah. the shake test right yeah. and so what we did is we went all right what's a different way of measuring it you can feel that in your hand. It's fairly lightweight. So oh, right. Yeah, yeah. There's not a whole lot of weight. Sort oh, of so it's out stripping the out the... So this is still magnetic then? Still magnetic. Oh, yeah. okay. And then you've also got these V-blocks here, which this was more customer feedback from when we designed the first mm. prototype of this. We went, all right, so there's a, a use case here. We'll try this sensor to measure the movement. Um, and then we had flat magnets and we went out to site and they needed to mount it to a curved surface. Right. So if you've got a flat magnet on a curved surface, it's going to like wobble around. Right. So we went, all right, let's do a V-block. And so one of our engineers, Josh, who was leading the project, designed this V-block. And when that's on a curved surface, it's nice and solid. And then you can mount that right. directly on Just top. There. Yeah. And you've got a really solid location to, to basically take your measurement from. And that's really important for the accuracy of that actual measurement. Again, it's just it's a, it's very safe gauge. It's just like it's designed in exactly the way you think it should be designed. There's no like, oh, okay, this, you didn't do some sort of weird slide thing, or yeah. there's nothing weird going on. It's just like no, this is just built how it's supposed to be built. It's done. So this now, like, how often if you're testing with this, how often would this attachment go on here? Um, every time. Yeah. Every time. So oh, okay. and it, it'll go on one end. So it depends where that particular sensor is located. Right. So. Because they can use this push rod for a, a range of tests, so it's not just for that that steering mm. test. Um, oh, I see. Oh, okay. But yeah, then this is they pretty much use these all the time for the steering test because they're actually on a steer cylinder which is curved and going to a, a ball joint which has a curved face. Right. On the other side as well. And so as you're doing the shake test, this is just basically sliding in and out. Yeah, it's right? just going yeah. in and out. And you, it's it's really cool to see actually because there's eight linkages. And they're getting eight measurements at the same time. So you put screen. eight units on. For, oh, I see. Yeah. And then, okay, so these eight units, then they would connect to this, which is yeah, your uh, right. what's it called? The multi tool pro. Multi tool pro. Yeah. And now you're reading all that in yeah. there. So it's it's really cool actually to see it populate because on the next screen, if this was the test, you'd have those first eight lines. Yeah. And it's got a function in there where it calculates the total movement, and so that just turns on automatically. Set up all your sensors, start your test, zero them all, and they're doing the shake. And these numbers are basically just forming on the screen of like, you know, up to the point where they get the maximum movement. Yeah. So then on the screen, you'll have, all right, 1.2, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 2 2.4. You go, oh, okay, that one needs to be replaced. Mm. Wow. So that can take, you know, what, what used to take two hours with three people you've got a, an operator a spotter and someone under the Easy. machine you know with a hand touching the the steering linkage potentially you know at risk of being crushed by all the moving parts under there yeah you can now do it with one person in 15 minutes yeah just a wow. bit of setup do the shake test all your readings export the report and then identify which ones might need to be replaced and i just want to do a quick pivot before we wrap up on to the 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 data side because yeah. that's i don't know how many episodes we do about data now um what it, what is actually happening where does that go to where is the workflow um you already sort of touched on it with like a big dealership that that's obviously going to be an important factor to them but how much of that has been in the conversation when you're talking to new clients yeah so i think from where we were with just the sensors just displaying on a basic screen that just showed them the live readings. A lot of the, the customers were saying, oh, can we get this in some other form that we can then you know, show to the supervisors or show to the client? And that was where we went to the tablet and went, all right, well, we can do more sensors on here 
And now we've got a software team of um, a couple of guys who are, you know, able to code some really cool stuff into this, into this tablet. Um, but I guess the, the value is to be able to have, have the reporting, have those readings accurately on the tablet. But on the report side of things, what we end up with is a really simple report outlining the machine details, the, the test that's been done and what the actual readings were. And so that, I guess, gives, like, gives a nice simple view of what has been done, how much movement there might be in a particular component or how far astray the, the pressures are running um, on a hydraulic system. Mm. And yeah, there's a bit of analysis in there as well. So the, rather than having to watch the live, the live readings the whole time, technicians can actually do the test let all the sensors just do their thing and then can go back and actually overlay a couple of sensors on top of each other, for example. So, oh, okay. See, all right, I just want to make And sure that's that all done through there or that's done somewhere? That's all done. Oh, somewhere. okay. Wow. Yeah, so I guess our, our data, the data we speak about is all in the tablet. It's there at the time right. of the testing. And then that report just gets sent out. If it needs to go beyond that, now you just send it out. Yeah, so we're keeping that connection between the technician doing the test. Right analyzing the data and creating a report to we're just keeping all of that basically in that right. one spot so you're not kind of creating a disconnect between all right one technician did the test and then someone else is well i was going to say the technicians must love that they must yeah. go yeah that's <laughs> yeah because it does feel sometimes like this some of the stuff it's just like it's almost just taking the information and just putting it out to somewhere else someone in management or something yeah. and it's like the technician is sort of the person it's, it's like it's going to go all the way out there just to come back around yeah yeah because yeah, you might have some pressures that are running and you know that those pressures might be showing up at when the machine's cold and then the technician knows that so they just go all right forget about that we're waiting till it warms up and then we're going to get our um, our actual pressure readings so there's a lot that actually comes from those technicians because they've got the experience and the knowledge of, of the machines that they're working on. And yeah, basically that, that insight to what's happening at the time, what that data is doing, then they can put any notes in there to save for later. What is the uh, most complicated design you've had to do here? What is the one that you went, ah, this is gonna be tricky? Dial indicator, 100%. This was actually my first project at Safe Gauge. Okay. So, did the mechanical housing, this um, coupling here, worked with an awesome industrial designer, John, um, yeah, with a, who sort of contracted in. And inside of there, there's bushes, a pin, springs, all has to be accurate, yeah. aligned. <laughs> um, yeah, trying to house all the circuitry and electronics in there as well. Amazing. And make sure that it just runs smoothly and reliably every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of the biggest challenges, but we got plenty more coming and it's really exciting yeah is there still a lot of design and a lot of that, is that team pretty busy still yeah 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 we've expanded to a team of seven or eight engineers and designers Amazing. um and got some really cool products coming soon well we can um probably check out next time you're, you're in australia well there's a couple things we need to do i i want to i got to convince the safe gauge team to put us out on site and like we'll do an episode with the safe uh or with the shake test being done in the background yeah. and stuff but we'll take some partners to arrange all that but yeah, yeah. i'd love to see this out in the field soon so amazing um amazing what safe gauge is do, uh doing and yeah thanks for doing the show no pleasure jared thank you thank you and thank you, everybody, for watching. Of course, as always, there'll be links to go check out Safe Gauge. Follow them on LinkedIn. Um, are you on LinkedIn as well? I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll put our guest name. You can connect with him directly. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for all the support. And we will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.